So today we're going to be talking about arc length and sector area. You will be able to learn how to use the formulas that are in your reference book to find the measure of arc lengths and sectors. Starting with arc length, the formula is theta over 360 times 2 pi r, where theta represents the angle in degrees and r represents the radius. Now, arc length is basically that respective fraction of the circumference. 2 pi r is the formula for circumference of a circle. So when you are finding arc length, you're finding, okay, how long is it, or how long is that piece of the circumference that's enclosed by that respective angle, okay? And then, of course, yes, R is your radius, and it is that simple. Can it be tricky? Yes, of course, and we'll look at some more complicated examples after we make sure that you guys can use the formulas adequately. We have to find the length of EF. As we can see in this particular problem, EF. EF is representing this piece. If you recall from your geometry days when it dealt with circles, two letters represent minor arcs, three letters represent major arcs. That's still kind of the same concept here. So we're talking about this piece of the circumference, not the bigger piece. And we use the formula, which says theta, which is your angle, over 360 times 2 pi, and your radius, which is 6. And we go straight into our calculator, and we type that in. Everybody knows how to get the pi button? You press the second button, and then you press the caret button. We do not use 3.14. We use the pi button. It gives you the full thing times your radius. So second, the caret, which is right above your division symbol, to get the pi button. Did everyone get this? So what is the length of my arc? 12.6. What? And it is just meters because we're talking about it in length, a measurement, a distance. Okay? Now it says the diameter of this circle is 24 centimeters, and we want to find the length of CD. Diameter. What's the uh, definition of diameter? The distance across the circle going through the going through the middle, specifically. So if the diameter is 24, what's the radius? Because it is always half. So yes, a little bit of work to help you in figuring out the length of CD. So again, it's your angle over 360 times 2 pi. Well, go ahead and type that into your calculator. What'd you guys get? Anyone? Twelve point six what? 12.6 centimeters. Yes. It is the same thing. Is that a coincidence? Yes. I know. Okay. Simple enough, yes? Okay. A circle has an arc whose measure is 80 degrees and whose <laughs> arc length is 276.46 pi inches. What's the diameter of the circle? You can also use the formula to work backwards. Okay. If you take the formula, which is arc length, theta over 360 times 2 pi r, we have a lot of information already. We know the arc length is 276.46 pi inches. Theta is what? 80. And we are looking for, what would I need to find in order to answer this question? You're looking for your radius, so then you just need to times that by 2. So algebraically, you basically need to go about to solve this. If you want to simplify, it's your choice. I have a pi on the left side and a pi on the right side. Which means <laughs> that when I try to divide, what's going to happen to the pi? They are going to cancel out. Okay? That looks out because I have a pi on the left and a pi on the right. Will that always happen? No. Okay? But I'm trying to simplify a little bit before I keep going. I can multiply my 2 and my 80 
saw multiplication. It's 2 times 80. 160. Now, do you have to do all the simplifying before finding the radius? No, you don't have to. But seeing this, now all I need to do is take 276.46 and divide it by that fraction of 160 over 30, um, 360. Okay? So find my radius. Let's, let's look at this. Okay, so we have 276.46. I need to divide that by 160 over 360. Okay, so that's not my Okay. Okay, put it all in parentheses so the calculator knows I want to divide that 276 number by that full fraction. You guys get that? So there's my radius. Now all I need to do to find my diameter is multiply by 2 and my answer to three significant figures will be three significant figures. It's 1,244.2. Uh, oh, wait, no, it's 1,200. And 40. 40. 40, 40. Remember, three significant figures. One, two, three. You stop here. But uh, that's four after the line. We'll keep it at a four, but you still need the placeholder of a zero. Okay? Sometimes you won't have decimals after you round the three significant figures. For example, four, it says find the measure of the central angle of an arc if its length is given to you and the radius is also given to you. If it says the central angle, <coughs> what do you think that's asking you to find? Say again? Theta. Yes. That angle here is called the central angle, okay? And that's a throwback from geometry, okay? Because it's vertex at the center of the circle, hence the central angle. So, again, I know what my arc length is. I am looking for theta, and I know that my radius is 18. So go ahead and find theta, rounded to three significant figures. So we're going to cancel the five, and then, okay, so 3.98, theta over 360, times 36, divide by 36 on both sides, so then that gets rid of this. So now I have whatever that number is. Divided by 36 equals theta over 360. So then I just need to multiply by 360. And your answer should have been 400. And technical is 39.8. But when you round up the three significant figures, you get 440. And there's no uniformness. They know my mistake when I type it. But that's how you can find angles and radii and arc lengths using the formula. <coughs> Questions? Then we got to make sure you we're able to type it in to our calculator correctly. <coughs> the second area is very similar, except this time instead of it being circumference involved, it is the area of a circle. Now, same formula. Theta is still the angle and r is still the radius. But this time it is pi r squared, not 2 pi r. But again, these formulas are in your reference booklet. Use them. Okay? And we are talking about a section of the circle. Okay? So basically like that section of the pizza. That is sector area. Okay? These are very straightforward. Okay, these two. You plug them into the formula. This time it is pi r squared, and you get your answer. Same thing for the one at the bottom. Angle divided by 360 times pi 
are squared. These two are very straightforward. Because we are running short of time, I want to get to the other two. Okay, but that's how you set it up. Type it into your calculator. We should get the correct answers. Okay? For this one, it says the area of the circle is 225 pi inches squared. Find the area of the sector whose central angle has a measure of 45 degrees. Sorry, the area of the circle. Sorry, the area of the circle is 225 pi inches. Find the area of the sector. Okay? Now, if the area of the circle is 225 pi inches, <coughs> what's the radius? How do I figure that out? For area of the circle. Power what? Squared. And if that's what the area of a circle is, then all I need to do is set them equal to each other and solve. Divide both sides by pi. What happens to the pi's? They cancel out. How do I find the radius? Take the square root. Now, technically, when you take the square root in an equation, you should get plus or minus that number. But we're talking about a radius. Can a radius be negative? No. What's the square root of 225? 15. Now, if the radius is 15, we can find our area of the sector now because we have our angle. And now we also have our radius. So we're going to do a little bit of algebra. Very common on SATs, the sector area. measure of the central angle if a sector of a sector if its sector area is 15.7 pi and its circle's radius is 6 meters. And this particular problem I'm looking for which variable? Theta. So I'm going to plug everything else in that I know. What's 6 squared? 36, and what's going to happen to the pi? They're going to cancel out. So I have basically 15.7 equals 3 theta over 360 times 36. And again, divide by 36, and then multiply by 360. So 15.7 divided by 36 times 360 will equal theta, which is 1,000 is really big. 157? 157. Make sure, make sure it's 15.7. Maybe not the other. Maybe not one. Okay. All right. So going back to example three, where you were asked to find the area of the sector. Uh, we had found the radius by using the fact that the area was 225 pi. We found the radius by setting it equal to pi r squared. Get the radius of 15 by plugging it into the formula. We will get 88.35, which rounds to three significant figures as 88.4. And since this is the area of the sector, it is inches squared. Area is always unit squared. Going back to example one and actually doing the math out from this particular problem, we will have 268.08, which rounds to be 268 meters squared, rounds to three significant figures. And then for the last one, 
we'll have 150.79 and some changes to round that to three significant figures would be 151 inches squared. Now, that is how you use the formula to apply it to some very simple problems, but let's take it up a notch and let's actually look at some ID type of problems, okay? Because yes, you may get some very simple, very straightforward ones every now and then, but let's do some harder practice problems. So, the following diagram shows a circle with a center A and a radius of 6, okay? The point B, C, and D lie on the circle, and angle B, A, C is equal to two radians. Radians? Well, what's radians? Well, radian is another way that you can represent an angle. There is a way to convert from radians to degrees that you should have learned about back in your Algebra 2 class. And that formula to convert from radians to degrees is by basically taking the radian value and multiplying it by 180 over pi. That is how you convert from de uh, radians to degrees. Take the radian value and multiply it by 180 over pi. Now, is there a formula in your reference booklet? Now, the formula in your reference booklet needs your angle to be a degree when you're working with it. So my suggestion to you is if you do end up getting a problem that has radians, use the conversion so then that way you'll actually have the angle in degrees to work with. Because to find the area of the sector, we want those two radians to be in degrees. So to do that, we're going to take 2 and multiply it by 180 and then divide it by pi. So then that way, this radian of two radians is converted to about 114.59 and some change degrees. So to find the area of the sector, we'll take that angle that is stored in my calculator, divide it by 360, and then multiply it by pi r squared because we are looking for the area. So pi 6 squared, and then we'll type that into our calculator and get our answer. And so when you type this into your calculator, you end up getting 36 centimeters squared. Okay? Now it asks you to find the perimeter of the non-shaded sector A, B, D, C. So it wants you to figure out what is the perimeter. Hopefully you remember that perimeter is adding up all the sides. So that includes this entire arc length here and your two radii. So be very careful. A lot of times students forget about the, um, the radii when it comes to finding the perimeter. So I have my two radii, which are six and six. Now I basically need to add in that whole curvature from B to D to C. That curvature would represent the length of that, um, of that particular arc. And as we know from before, length is your angle divided by 360 times 2 pi your radius. Hopefully you're thinking to yourself, well, there are 360 degrees in a circle. So to figure out what this angle is, we need to take that 114 number and subtract it from 360. So that angle that we're going to use is 245.41 and some change. And by performing the arc length of BDC, and adding it to the two radii, we will get the perimeter of our non-shaded area. So when I perform the arc length and add the two sixes, that's going to give me 37.699 and some change. So then the perimeter is going to be 37.7 centimeters. So there's an example of an IV problem, okay? Let's look at one more. So consider the following circle with a center O and a radius of 6.8 centimeters. The length of the arc EQR is 8.5 centimeters. We want to find the value of theta. We want 
themselves and find the value of data. Now, PQR, they are referencing this piece right here from P to Q to R. So that link is 8.5. So to find theta, we want to use the arc length formula. And since 8.5 is arc length, we're going to go ahead and set that equal to theta over 360 times 2 pi r. And we are going to solve for theta. The same way we did on, I think, example 3 and 4 from the arc length um, multiple. So after doing a little bit of algebra, hopefully you tried this yourself. You should have got theta to be 71.6 degrees. 71.6 degrees. And now to find the area of the shaded region, which is all of this here, we're going to need our theta. We're going to need 360. And we're going to need to multiply that by pi r squared. Again, there's 360 degrees in a circle, so we're going to do 360 minus the angle of theta, which we found in part A. And that angle is going to be 288.38 and some change, divided by 360 times pi 6.8 squared. You never want to use the rounded answer when you have to use it in the following part, okay? Always use your non-rounding answer. So when I'm Divide and then multiply that by 6.8 squared pi. Your area is 116.36. Round to three significant figures is 116 centimeters squared. So this is just two examples of IB problems that involve arc length and sector area, which I hope, you know, gives you a little bit more practice and the level of what, you know, you could potentially be tested on.